When an elaborate hoax news story said Flanders had declared independence, thousands believed it. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 more creepiest things caught on live TV. I want to be in the war and, and save the country. When we showed the clip, everyone had a theory. For this list, we'll be looking at the most disturbing and spine-chilling moments that were captured live and left viewers deeply disturbed. What's the creepiest thing you've ever witnessed live? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Rubsy's Paranormal Livestream This eerie encounter looks like something straight out of a horror movie. YouTuber Rubsy was reportedly pet-sitting at a friend's house when his livestream audience noticed something strange. At first, it appeared that the door behind him was opening unaided. Sure, that could be attributed to a faulty hinge, but when it suddenly slammed shut all by itself, it became apparent that something spooky was going on. From there, things devolved into a horror fest. Lights going on and off, objects moving about seemingly on their own. There's enough happening to make just about anyone lose their mind. But surprisingly, Rubsy maintains his composure throughout the ordeal, adding an even more unsettling layer to the unfolding situation. Like I said, I don't think you should fucking do it. Number 19, 2002 Falun Gong Hijackings. The spiritual movement Falun Gong gained notoriety in China after they were branded a heretical organization by the government in 1999. By the end of the 1990s, he had tens of millions of followers in China. The communist leadership saw that as a threat to its own grip on power and banned the movement. After years of physical protests and arrests, the group took their descent to the airwaves. In 2002, they hijacked state TV broadcasts, airing a film accusing the Chinese Communist Party of oppression. The film also claimed that the government staged certain events to give the group a bad image. Such anti-government messages are far from the norm in China, so they understandably left a lot of viewers stunned. <laughs> The duration of these interruptions varies depending on who you ask, but they occurred multiple times throughout 2002, even once cutting off the FIFA World Cup Finals. Number 18. A Nearly Fatal Collision News reporting can be a dangerous job, though seldom is it so unexpected as this case. KTVU correspondent Alex Savage was covering an unrelated incident alongside a San Francisco highway when an out-of-control automobile nearly smashed into him. Went off the tracks, and obviously it was a chaotic and confusing situation for as he leapt out of the way, the disoriented camera tilted and eerily settled on one of the tire's loose hubcaps. If that image of the crash's aftermath wasn't chilling enough, Savage's later reflections on the moment might be. It's scary. It's, it's scary. Okay. It's all right, Alex. It's okay. Right. You, you, you collect your thoughts. We're just thankful will, to see you and Chip. Glad you're okay. He commented that his choice to go right instead of left was split second. The footage is a hair-raising reminder that the forces threatening our mortality are often only moments away. Just listen to Savage's shaking voice just moments afterward and you might be robbed of peaceful sleep. Number 17, Wendy Williams passes out. This moment might hug the line between scary and creepy, but it's disturbing in either case. During what was supposed to be a fun Halloween-themed intro, veteran TV personality Wendy Williams suddenly lost control of her motor functions. She stumbled backwards in wide-eyed horror, inexplicably dropping to the floor. Get started. Our first caress. Williams later explained that dehydration and a sudden rise in body temperature caused the incident, and she was able to recover before the broadcast was even over. That was not a stunt. I'm overheated in my costume and I did pass out, but you know what? I'm a champ and I'm back. Though the incident was ultimately minor, the host definitely didn't know that at the time. And we can see that frightened uncertainty in her expression. And if you watch the clip without context, she almost looks possessed. Initial creepiness aside, we agree with Wendy's self-assessment of herself as a champ. Kevin said, you know, baby, I know you can do it. Go back out there and show them what you're made of. Close out the show. I said, I know, right? Number 16, Ventriloquist Senate Candidate. In 2012, Republican hopeful Barry Hinckley challenged Democratic incumbent Sheldon Whitehouse for the Rhode Island Senate seat. During his campaign, Hinckley released an adorable ad featuring his young son Hudson that grabbed everyone's attention. However, when they both appeared for a follow-up interview on Fox News, many were unsettled by what they saw. When host Neil Cavuto questions Hudson about the ad, Hinckley strangely mouths the exact words the boy says. What are your friends saying when they see you on TV? Um, I don't know right now. Did you notice the dad's lips moving? Sort of like a bad ventriloquist? 
If we didn't know any better, we'd think the Senate candidate and his son were just a bad ventriloquist act looking for some airtime. The interview unsurprisingly left a bad taste in people's mouths, which may have contributed to Hinckley's eventual loss at the polls. Why were you mouthing the words that he said? Well, I'm not sure. You know, I was folk, you know, obviously we were both a bit nervous because it was the first time we did national TV. Number 15, mysteriously moving glass of water. The Primera Edición breakfast show in Honduras had their own fair share of a spooky occurrence during a live taping in 2015. While presenting the morning news, host Carlos Molina notices his glass of water move on its own. <laughs> He's taken aback, naturally, and calls the attention of his co-host Pablo Zapata to it. Molina described feeling a chilling sensation just seconds before observing the self-sliding glass, attributing it to a paranormal experience. Viewers were a bit more skeptical, however, speculating that it was likely a prank on the hosts by their co-workers. This notion has since been dismissed by Molina, who countered that when he tried to move the glass afterwards, it remained stuck to the table. Number 14. Blue Light in New York City Aliens, UFOs, the apocalypse, those were some of the thoughts on the minds of New Yorkers when a bright blue light engulfed the sky in December 2018. Many who were indoors witnessed the eerie lights being broadcast on the news, as they pretty much turned nighttime to day. Overnight, the New York City sky lit up in a supernatural shade of blue. Oh my god. What is that? That looks gnarly. Wait, look at the sky. Well, that doesn't look good. Sparking alarm citywide. To further complicate matters, some residents saw the lights in their homes flicker and the LaGuardia Airport experienced a total blackout. Fortunately, this one wasn't the work of any extraterrestrial force. Instead, the blue light was caused by an explosion at a power plant in Queens, which would explain the outages residents experienced. The explosion and fire knocking out power in the area and wreaking havoc at LaGuardia Airport. Guess the aliens decided to take a rain check on their invasion plans. Number 13. UFO Flashes Intense Bright Light In February 2020, a crowd of over 200 people gathered for a UFO sighting at Yaya Beach in Peru, which has been described as a hotspot for the strange objects. The event was covered by Capital TV and broadcast live to thousands of viewers. At one point, some people in the audience noticed an unexplained light hovering above the sea. They pointed their laser pens at the mysterious object, only to be hit by an intense bright light in response. As the program was filmed late in the night, it's not quite clear what the light source could be. A boat? A drone? A UFO? We'll leave that for you to decide. Number 12. Spanish Reporter with Reptilian Eyes This unsettling footage was captured by a viewer who was watching the Spanish news channel Televisión Español Internacional. Towards the end of the piece, the reporter blinks repeatedly and for a brief moment a second set of eyeballs appears over his closed eyelids. I'm looking at this reporter and I notice something about his eyes at the very last minute. According to the viewer, this was possible proof of the reporter being an anthropomorphic reptile camouflaging among humans. The actual explanation, however, may be a lot less fantastic. Some internet users speculated that the reporter may have been wearing contact lenses, which made him blink often. There it is, the blink. I'm gonna do it in slow-mo now. There we go. That, combined with a camera compression glitch, likely resulted in the reptilian effect. Either way, the appearance is sure to give anyone watching the creeps. Number 11. Paranormal Newspapers These days it seems poltergeists and breakfast shows go hand in hand. Yet another alleged poltergeist disturbance occurred on the morning club show at Club FM in Tirana, Albania. At first everything seems normal, until suddenly it isn't. The host, Blendy Saleh, appears to be interviewing a guest on the program when a newspaper on the table in front of them abruptly flies off camera. <laughs> What makes this particularly disturbing is that the two are the only ones sitting in the booth and there aren't any doors open or windows in sight. Wow. So what exactly could have thrown the newspaper in the air? Understandably, Soleil and his guests are dumbfounded. Wow. Wow. Phantasm? And frankly, so are we. Number 10. TV Solidarity in September 1985, Polish audiences who tuned into the popular crime show, Zedo Shedem's Goshe, were met with strange inscriptions superimposed over the broadcast. The message read, Enough price increases, lies, and repressions. Solidarity Toruin, and it is our duty to boycott the election. It was later revealed that this intrusion was carried out by four astronomers from the University of Toruin in Poland. This was done as a show of support for the Solidarity Opposition Movement, which had called for a boycott of the 1985 parliamentary elections in protest of the communist regime. This fight with the communist monster was really impossible. We could only fight against it by using its own weapons, because it pretended to be the people's system. The men were eventually apprehended, but due to their significant contributions to the Polish scientific community, they were only fined and given probation. Number 9. UFO Descends on London Football Match 
In February 2019, the eighth edition of the FA Women's League Cup was underway. The second semi-finals match saw Arsenal go up against Manchester United, with the former winning by two goals to one. But it seems humans weren't the only ones interested in the league. During the aforementioned match, one eagle-eyed fan spotted a mysterious object hovering above the stadium. Where Melbourne victory faced Perth Glory, that's at 2.45 a.m. on ESPN. And Brisbane Roar are up against Sydney. Upon closer inspection, the viewer noticed a strange red object emitting the light. Like many other sightings, it's hard to tell if this was some form of spacecraft or just a drone. That's at 2.45 a.m. on ESPN. And Brisbane Roar are up against Sydney live. If it was indeed a bunch of aliens watching, we can only hope they at least enjoyed the game. Number 8. The Ghostly Groundsman in September 2016, football fans who tuned into Sky Sports for Sunderland's match against Everton were in for a spooky surprise. Here's Lukaku, on for his hat-trick to finish it! While the pundits discussed the game afterwards, observant viewers picked up an enigmatic figure on a screen in the background, which then mysteriously vanished. The individual appeared to be a groundsman tidying up the stadium after the game. Is the fact that last season they were a bit of an unknown quantity. Nobody really set up to play to nullify the strengths this season. I think teams are ready for them. Moments later, a similar phenomenon occurred with another figure. Fans who spotted the ghost groundsman took to social media to voice out their perplexity. This could have been two phantoms caught on camera or just stock footage of the stadium being played on a loop. If only we knew which. Number 7. Flemish Secession Hoax in 2006, the Belgian TV station RTBF orchestrated a hoax that caused quite the stir in the French-speaking parts of the country. On December 16th, they interrupted a broadcast on one of their channels with an urgent announcement that the Flemish parliament had declared independence from Belgium. The piece appeared genuine, including interviews with politicians and a fake evacuation of the Belgian royal family from their palace. To top it all off, they showed footage of crowds cheering and waving the Flanders flag. The result? More than 2,000 worried people flooded the station's hotline with calls, and their website eventually crashed. 30 minutes later, RTBF admitted that the report was a hoax. Number 6. Mystery Voice Interrupts Queen Elizabeth's Funeral the 2022 state funeral of Queen Elizabeth II was one of the most watched TV broadcasts in British history, with over 26 million residents tuning in to catch the event. Some of London's busiest routes closed, lined with people, throwing flowers, cheering, taking photos. Those who watched the funeral on ITV may have picked up a mysterious voice as the Queen's hearse made its way to West London. For a few seconds, a female voice can be heard whispering about death and being trapped. Death is irreversible and the fact that she's trapped. As you can see. Soon after, social media erupted with speculation about where the sound could have come from. One notable theory surmised that it was possibly the voice of the late Princess Diana. However, according to certain sources, it was simply that of a guest being picked up by the presenter's microphone. Number 5. The Playboy Channel Religious Message the last place you may expect to find the gospel is on the Playboy channel. So we can imagine how stunned Playboy audiences were on Sunday, September 6, 1987, when a broadcast of the adult film Three Daughters was interrupted by religious texts. Listen, I'm a little flabbergasted by this whole thing. The message came from the Bible verses Exodus 28 and Matthew 4:17, which warned them to repent and keep the Sabbath day holy. Safe to say that someone wasn't pleased with all of the unholy viewing going on. I know that uh, she wants. A federal investigation later revealed that that someone was Thomas Haney, a technician at the Christian Broadcasting Network. Haney was found guilty of satellite piracy and sentenced to three years probation. Number 4. The Great Tantra Challenge In March of 2008, audiences in India bore witness to a bizarre showdown. Author and self-proclaimed rationalist Sainal Itamaraku dared the tantric guru Sodinder Sharma to kill him live on television. Sharma had bragged during a prior panel that he could take a person's life within three minutes using his mystic powers. Itamaruku then decided to put him to the test, volunteering himself as tribute. For several hours, Sharma seemingly invoked supernatural forces to take Itamaruku's life to no avail. At one point, the tantric claimed that his subjects served a more powerful god, to which Itamaruku reported that he was an atheist. The challenge was reportedly watched by hundreds of millions of viewers, all of whom witnessed Sharma's epic fail. Number 3. Captain Midnight for four and a half minutes on April 27, 1986, HBO experienced a signal intrusion that was caught by viewers along the East Coast. While showing the 1985 film The Falcon and the Snowman, the feed abruptly cut to a blank screen with a strange text across it. The message appeared to have been sent by an individual named Captain Midnight, who didn't seem too pleased with HBO's subscription fees. An objection to the price HBO is charging dish owners for access to its recently scrambled programs. The signal got weaker, then, after four minutes, the movie resumed. 
The incident was investigated by the FCC and FBI, resulting in the arrest of John R. McDougal. McDougal owned a satellite dish which was struggling due to the cable channel's high rates. His protest earned him a little infamy as well as a $5,000 fine. McDougal confessed to the FCC TV cops, and although the agency says his action, if it disrupted military or telephone communications, could be a very serious business, in this case he'll get off with a $5,000 fine. Number 2. Samuel J. Seymour's Secret the CBS game show I've Got a Secret featured a panel of celebrities trying to guess a contestant's secret. Most of these were funny or embarrassing, but on February 9, 1956, 95-year-old Samuel J. Seymour strolled onto the set with a chilling account. Would this person have ever been president of the United States? Was he ever president, this man? Well, I think he was once. Would it have been Abraham Lincoln? After being questioned by the celebrity panel, Seymour revealed that he was reportedly the last surviving witness of Abraham Lincoln's assassination. Seymour claimed that at the age of five, he sat across from the presidential box at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. when John Wilkes Booth fired the fatal shot. When he saw Booth jump from the box to the stage, at which time he broke his leg, his only concern was not for the president, because he didn't realize that the president had been shot, but the poor man who fell out of the balcony. His haunting recollection of the event brought history to life and must have sent shivers down the spines of all who listened. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Dutch TV presenters eat each other. Yeah, you heard that right. In December 2011, Dennis Storm and Valerio Zeno, two presenters on the Dutch show Guinea Pigs, took a bite into the bizarre but seemingly devouring pieces of each other's flesh live on air. No jokes about fava beans and a nice Chianti here. It was undoubtedly an unsettling sight, as Storm and Zeno underwent surgical procedures to remove small chunks of flesh from their buttocks and abdomen, respectively. These were then cooked by a chef in front of a live audience and presented to them. The brazen stunt certainly left a bad taste in many viewers' mouths. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Nevertheless, it didn't cross the legal line as cannibalism is permitted in the Netherlands, provided that it is not done with malicious intent. 